Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about a rather unique couple of uh, snow-filled post-apocalyptic, you know, stories. Or, you know, Snowpiercer 1, The Escape, and Snowpiercer 2, Ex The Explorers. Starting with Escape, obviously. And um, <clears throat> the story uh, centers around this guy by the name of Proloff and how uh, he, you know, immigrates himself onto the, you know, Ford cars out of the, uh, to the train, trying to escape away from the uh, third class section, aka the tail section, so he can, like, you know, live a better life and, uh, his life, life sucks there. For various reasons, which I don't want to get into the, because, you know, major spoilers. I'll just say that life really sucks. And, um, you know, and, like, he's, of course, caught, and they're debating on whether or not they can, uh, on, like, what to do with him. And so they, uh, you know, essentially, after a few days of quarantine, him and his uh, love interest, Adel Adeline, or Adeline, or whatever, you know, they go on to the, and to the, you know, Ford sections, and, you know, see the various cars, and we see how uh, this little uh, train-based civilization, you know, functions. You know, seeing the, you know, the the uh, <clears throat> agricultural cars, the meat, the weird, the um, meat uh, making thing uh, that makes like a like this uh, meat stuff. Um, you know, and. Um, you know, uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> and um, you know, seeing like however how people just live their lives, and you know, um, and like one thing that is um, kind of interest, and uh, th there's really not much to say beyond that. I mean, there is like more, but really the whole thing just is like mostly just is just about like like I said, seeing how this thing works. How, every, how everything works here. And, um, you know, it's just a rather interesting and uh, cool uh, thing. And, um, of course, this is the uh, comic that, of the two comics, this is a more famous one that actually wound up inspiring the movie of the same title, just, although the movie is just called Snowpiercer. Which, I'll be honest, I did not actually care for that much. I mean, like, I mean, for starters, like, um, like in the, uh, like, merge, let's just sort of like the differences between the book. I'm not saying that it should have been like the, like the, like the comic, but, um, it, there is, you know, some stuff that I didn't re really, because, like, I'd rather have something be good than accurate, and, um, I just, like, it, it both wasn't accurate and wasn't good. I, like, I didn't much care for it either. I mean, like, for starters, like, this whole uh, thing where, like, though, like, I'm supposed to, like, somehow get behind the, um, well, actually, you know what, I think I should probably save for, like, maybe, that, that could probably make, like, a whole video into itself, why I didn't really care for the Snowpiercer film, but just, like, like, you know, just the characters, that just, I just didn't like it at all, and, you know, of the two things, you know, I would suggest reading the comic. Now, anyway, the um, second one, the one that did not get the movie based on, you know, um, Snowpiercer 2 The Explorers, um, takes place about uh, 15 or 15 estimated years after the uh, first Snowpiercer, you know, comic, give or take. And, um, and the whole thing really centers around this guy named, um, I don't know how it's, how it's pronounced, uh, Pig, Pug, Pug, or, I don't know, um, and, um, like, his, the, his love interest is even less memorable than Adeline, you know, there's, like, I cannot really think of it, but anyway, um, <clears throat> he's, um, the whole thing is, like, um, he becomes one of these explorers whose job it is to, like, um, like, he, he lives aboard this thing called the Icebreaker, 
and like every now and then they will do a braking test and you know stop and and uh, like get outside and whatever although I don't really get it and, and oh yeah during this whole thing like he you know gets in through various uh, stuff that happens he you know gets up front and you know into the front of the car in front of the train and is allowed to live among the upper classes and the whole is, is like him like doing like the various political or like having to engage in the various political stuff that happens like you know attempted coups and stuff like that although and although it doesn't really quite have the same appeal because I mean like on the one hand like I know it's not necessarily about just that they live on a train like the first one like the, f the first one is pr the predominantly unique or you know like um, the hook is that it's on a train but on this one, the train that they're on is less trainy. Like, it, it, I should tell you that it's not the Snowpiercer that it's on. It's you know the Icebreaker, another kind of train. And I don't really get it. Like, there's uh, I'm assuming it's nuclear powered, I guess, because like I don't think it, the same way it could work on you know this. Like, it's, we actually see that it's actually much bigger than the Snowpiercer, and. Um, and like, I don't really know why it was like the first Snowpiercer was made as like a uh, like a luxury train liner. You know, like you go and do like vacation on this train, and like every one of your whims are made, or you know filled up and um, or fulfilled every whim that you could probably think of on a train. But in this one, like I don't really get like. Uh, like, is this some sort of military vehicle? Like, it must be because it has, like, you know, machine guns on, like, the first and rear, the front and rear engines, you know? And it also has, like, um, of course, these suits, which look like they're possibly made specifically to be, you know, worn outside, you know, for people to survive. And, um, and, like, uh, yeah. And, um, also, there's like a seems like more of the uh, bad guys are like a lot more um well for lack of a better term like cartoonishly bad and uh, yeah although it's still entertaining enough you know seeing him uh, you know sort of navigate between like the politics of the various leaders of the uh, radarists and the religious and the you know main uh, dictator kennel. And, uh, yeah. But, um, out of the two, I, you know, actually thought the... I like the first one. No, the second one is good. So, yeah. Overall, I give the, uh, first Snowpiercer comic an overall rating of a 5 out of 5. Definite recommendation. You know, like, it's just so unique and, uh, it, you know, just interesting and, you know, you should definitely check it out, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, the, uh, second installment, The Explorers, I give a 4 out of 5, a comfortable recommendation. You know, it's just, it's okay, you know, it's fun, you know, it's decent enough. You know, some, like, the politics between the you know, various peoples, and, um, you know, the whole drop, the drama, and, uh, yeah. And, and, and even though it's still less training, it's still pretty interesting. Anyway, um, next time, we're going to be taking a look at a uh, supernatural uh, story that frankly kind of had me a little puzzled when I first saw it. Boom. Yeah. Anyway, um... Until next time, see you later. Keep yourselves awesome by going out and, you know, supporting your local bookstores and libraries with your patronage money, volunteering, donations, and so on and so forth. And have a nice day.